Hi everybody, Captain Al speaking with your time training tips and 10 ticks targeted to teaching technical type transport travel through tailored tiny takeaways. The question for today, episode 8, part 2, what FMS CDU exercises do airline pilots need to know? Today we take a look at down track waypoints and intercept course from for the Boeing 747-400 and Boeing 747-8. Okay, we're in the virtual simulator to answer the question of the day. What FMS CDU exercises do airline pilots need to know? And this is uh, part two. We'll be looking at uh, down track waypoints. Part one, we looked at uh, modifying the active waypoint. Now we'll look at some down track waypoints. We'll look at uh, bypassing waypoints, intercepting a leg from. We'll do this both in the uh, PSX 747-400 and the PMDG 747-8. Uh, so we're out of Seattle, we're heading eastbound, and let's take the first case where we want to uh, bypass waypoints. And we'll say the clearance is that we, after Beezer, we want to go direct to Quint. So we're not modifying the active waypoint because the clearance is after Beezer. So we'll bring Quint to the scratch pad. We'll make sure the scratch pad is blank. And then we're going to bring Quint on top of, and the clearance was after Beezer. So just like it sounds is how we do it. After Beezer, direct to Quint, flight plan route. And all we're doing when we do this is we're bypassing Ellensburg. We're bypassing Zaxel to go to Quint. So by line selecting L4, that'll go to the scratch pad, and then we can line select that into L2, and that'll bypass these two waypoints of Ellensburg and Zaxel. So let's put that in now. You can see it did nothing to the active waypoint. The active waypoint is still Beezer. You can see on your ND that after Beezer, we're going direct to Quint, and we're bypassing uh, Zaxel and Ellensburg. You'll notice again that uh, the erase prompt appears, the execute light illuminates, and the active legs page becomes modified legs page. So let's go ahead and execute that. When you do, modified becomes active, the erase prompt goes away, the execute light extinguishes, the dashed white line, which was modified, will go to a solid magenta line. And you'll notice in this case that we did bypass Ellensburg we bypass that Zaxel to go from Beezer to Quint. And so when you do uh, bypass waypoints, you'll also notice there's no root discontinuity because there was no gap in your route. The route is joined up after Quint to go to Koya and Euphrata and Moses Lake. So there was no break in the route, so there was no discontinuity. In the next example, uh, what we've done here is we're going direct back direct to Ellensburg, and then after Ellensburg, direct to Quint. And uh, the clearances after Ellensburg, uh, track outbound on the 120 radial, till further advised. And so that would be a case where it's not a intercept leg to problem, it's an intercept leg from problem. And in order to do this in the legacy, uh, FMC, you have to create a place bearing distance. So what we can do is bring Ellensburg into the scratch pad and we want the 120 radial so we'll put in 120 and then we'll put a slash and then we'll create a distance. The distance can really be anything uh, depending on how far you expect to be tracked outbound which is probably not far so probably under 100 miles is good. 50 miles, 70 miles, something like that would be fine. You can always extend it if you need to. And then you would place that place bearing slash distance after Ellensburg. And what that would do is create a point out there and that would represent tracking the 120 radial outbound from Ellensburg. Now one thing you can't do is you cannot create a uh, an inbound course. So if you did this and you tried to put uh, 120 in, this is always intercept leg 2, so that would be a 120 
inbound course into Ellensburg and if you put 300 which would look better but this is also an inbound course into Ellensburg so you would not be able to do that let me pause the simulator here so you would not be able to do that you can see that uh, in this case if we were anywhere in here or anywhere in here and we wanted to intercept the 300 inbound course to Ellensburg this would work but nothing's going to track outbound this is always an intercept course to it's never an intercept course from so in order to track outbound from Ellensburg you have to create a place bearing distance in order to do that in the legacy FMC now you'll see that in the more advanced FMC the NG FMC there's something we can do to track outbound but for the legacy you have to create a place bearing distance in order to track outbound so we'll go ahead and release the sim and then we'll erase that okay now we're in the uh, PMDG 747-8 we're uh, with the NG FMC now and uh, we're just leveling at uh, 17,000 we're going eastbound again to Beezer and then to Ellensburg and then to uh, Quint via the airway You'll notice uh, the difference right away with the FMCNG, and that's that the active waypoint is magenta. You don't have just monochrome now, you have uh, a few colors. And uh, the active waypoint is just like it is on the ND, it's magenta. And all downtrack waypoints are white, just like they are on the ND. So we're going to do the same type of things we did in the uh, PSX. We're first going to bypass waypoints. We'll do the same exercise. There's no difference in the Dash 8 versus the 747-400 PSX, the Legacy FMC. So after Beezer, if we're cleared direct to Quint, we'll bring Quint to the scratch pad, make sure there's nothing in the scratch pad, and then we'll line select Quint after Beezer. And that will bypass uh, these three waypoints, Ellensburg, ISP, and Zaxel. You notice there's another waypoint here, ISP, but this is a more active database now in the uh, PMDG than it was in the Aerowinks, so there was an added waypoint here. So when you bring it after Beezer, you'll notice that uh, we do bypass those three waypoints. You'll also notice that the modified now has a gray kind of box in the background around it and so does Quint. It's got a, a light gray background showing you that that's what the modification is. You're not modifying the active waypoint, you're modifying the waypoint, the second waypoint which is Quint and we're bypassing these three waypoints, Ellensburg, uh, Ice Beat, and Zaxel. So when you execute that, the execute light goes out, the erase prompt goes away, modified becomes active and you'll notice uh, the dashed white line goes to solid magenta and those waypoints are bypassed. Let's go direct to Ellensburg now. So we'll type out Echo, Echo Lima November. And again you'll notice when we go to the modify the active waypoint, same thing happens. Gray box kind of highlights modified gray box around Ellensburg. We are modifying the active waypoint in this case, so we get the beam points, the root copy, and the intercept course 2. We just want to go direct to Ellensburg, so we'll execute that. And after Ellensburg, we'll go direct Quint. Notice we do have a discontinuity because the computer doesn't know what it wants us to do. Uh, we have to tell it after Ellensburg, so we want to go direct Quint. So we'll bring Quint down into the boxes, and that'll solve that discontinuity and close the route back up. And now the same clearance is going to pursue here. We're, after Ellensburg, we're going to track outbound on the Ellensburg 120 degree radial. Uh, so there's a couple things we can do here. That We could do the same thing we did in the previous, uh, in the PSX. We could go bring Ellensburg to the scratch pad, type out 120 slash any mileage. We'll choose 50 again. And we can line select that after Ellensburg, Ellensburg 01, which is a created waypoint out there. It's the first created waypoint in Route 1. But we said there's another way to do this, so we'll go ahead and erase that. And bring the range down. 
The other way we can do that is we can, uh, again, we could either go to the VOR mode and on the NAVRAD page, we could put in Ellensburg with a course. We could again do the same thing, put in ELN and slash 120. And that'll manually tune Ellensburg and give us the dash line in or out. And then we could go to the VOR mode, which would be another way we could do this. And then you'll notice there's our course deviation indicator on our information for Ellensburg. And then we could tr once we cross Ellensburg, we could track outbound on that 120 radial using heading select. But we want to do this in LNAV, so we're going to go back to the map mode. And again, we'll get rid of this and go back to auto tuning. And what we're going to do now is discuss the way that we can put a radial outbound from Ellensburg using a special convention in the uh, NGFMC and that is by selecting Ellensburg to the scratch pad and putting in 180 or 120 sorry the uh, radial outbound and then we can put that to the top and you'll notice that that'll create from the tip of the triangle out a 120 course and then if we wanted to we could just fly like that until we reach Ellensburg when we reach Ellensburg we could execute that and that would go to 120 and notice before we execute it notice that the 120 is in parentheses again you have modified you have the gray boxes in the background but notice down here now it does say intercept course from it doesn't say intercept course to and you could put whatever course you want in here if we didn't want 120 we could put 100 you know whatever we want to put in there we can in this case ATC told us it's the uh, 120 course we'll put back in 120 and we'll execute that notice the airplane is staying in LNAV it's approaching the fix it's not turning to this heading yet but once it crosses Ellensburg, it's going to then intercept that course. So we'll watch it do that. It's coming up on ELN now. And it's crossed Ellensburg now. And the airplane is going to start the turn to intercept that course. Now this line goes out for... I'm assuming this line is also a six, looks like a 699 mile line as well. You can see it stops right there. So remember the dash 8 can go up to 1280. It looks like this line is a 699 line as well. And now we'll see how well the PMDG does getting on course here. Again, if we want to check the accuracy, we could always go back here and put in ELN. And put in that 120 radial just to have that as a reference. And then we could bring our uh, VOR needle up to VOR. And there I've got my VOR needle selected. And I'm looking at the tail of the needle. You can see it's a little bit off now, but as we correct back here, it'll go to 120. We'll see how close it is in here. Back to VOR and we'll see what it looks like. We can update our heading bug. And we'll go back to map. This kind of looks like it's veering through here a little bit, corrected back a couple times. I think the airplane would probably do a better job than that. Maybe not, though. Sometimes you're surprised. The airplane does the same thing sometimes. And it looks like it's starting to settle down now, but we've got that 120 course that goes out until we tell it something different to do. And if we go back to uh, VOR mode now, you can see we're pretty much on course. 
and go back to the map mode. And we're pretty much on course on that 120 radial. So once we're done doing that, so now he might say, oh, let's, your clear present position, direct Quint on course. So we bring Quint down, Quint to the top, and we'll execute it. And then LNAV is available, LNAV is engaged, and off we go to Quint. Another thing you can do is create a uh, kind of a vector leg uh, from your present position out on a certain course. Uh, the convention for that is you put in P slash P, and then you put what the course you want. So let's say we want the uh, 320 course in this case. So we'll put P slash P320, and then you line select it to the top. And what it'll do is it'll create a present position uh, waypoint and the course outbound on the uh, 320. And again, that line will go out for uh, 699 nautical miles, a long line basically out. So if you line select that to the top, you'll see there's the P pause, execute that, and the airplane will, uh, I'm not sure why it's turning right, but we'll see what it does. Should have more or less just kept going straight ahead because that waypoint was right there. Yeah, and I was turning back. I don't know why it made that gyration. Should have just continued straight ahead. So it kind of creates this uh, present position waypoint and then creates a vector line out on the 320 course and that's what it's going to do is intercept that 320 course and then uh, go out until you tell it to do something different. We'll see what it's going to do here. Should start turning back. Go to the NavRad page and delete this. Revert it back to auto tuning. And so this is kind of like a vector line basically on a 320 course outbound. I don't know when you'd ever use this, um, but that's one of the conventions that you can uh, use in the airplane. So let's say after that we go direct to uh, Quint, uh, or we clear direct Quint at this time. Go direct Quint, and that'll then take that line out of there. And there we go. Okay, so that'll wrap up uh, part two, which was uh, looking at down track waypoints, uh, bypassing waypoints, and intercepting a leg from a waypoint in both the PSX 747-400 and the PMBG 747-8, uh, which has the uh, NG FMC. In part three, we'll look at uh, airway intercepts. Thanks for watching.